the Vietnam War saw a significant portion of soldiers being enlisted through the country's selective service system, commonly known as the draft. As opposition to the war grew, many young men sought various methods to avoid conscription. Some attempted to obtain medical exemptions from sympathetic doctors, while others relocated to areas with more lenient draft boards. Joining the National Guard or Coast Guard, where combat deployment was less likely, was another strategy employed by some. Attending college became one of the most prevalent means of draft avoidance. By enrolling in universities, young men could defer their military service, leading to a disproportionate number of soldiers being drawn from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. The demographic composition of soldiers in Vietnam was skewed towards lower class whites and minorities, with approximately 80% of American troops coming from economically disadvantaged backgrounds. Consequently, the war became associated with being a working class conflict. African Americans, despite constituting a smaller percentage of the population, made up a significant portion of early casualties in Vietnam. Civil rights leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr., protested this disproportionate representation of African American soldiers in the war. Moreover, black soldiers often faced racial discrimination within their units, adding to their challenges in combat, while women were not allowed to serve in combat roles in the U.S. military during the 1960s, nearly 10,000 Hoz women served as Army or Navy nurses in Vietnam. Additionally, thousands more volunteered in organizations like the American Red Cross and the United Services Organization, USO, which provided support and entertainment to troops stationed overseas. In the 1960s, American college students emerged as a politically active force, giving rise to the New Left Movement. Unlike the old left of the 1930s, which aimed for socialist ideals, the new left did not advocate for socialism, but instead sought broad societal changes within the United States. One prominent organization within the new left was Students for a Democratic Society, SDS, which campaigned for increased individual freedoms in the country. Another significant group was the Free Speech Movement, FSM, originating at the University of California, Berkeley, amid a dispute over free expression rights on campus. FSM extended its criticism to encompass business and government institutions. The influence and strategies of SDS and FSM extended beyond their founding campuses, spreading to universities nationwide. While initially focused on campus-specific issues, student activism became increasingly united in protesting against the Vietnam War, providing a common cause for demonstrations across the country. In the 1960s, lots of college students in America got really upset about the war happening in Vietnam. They had different reasons for being mad. Most of them thought the war was none of the U.S.'s business because it was basically a fight between North and South Vietnam. Others thought the war was stopping America from helping out in other parts of the world. And some just felt like the war was totally unfair. In April 1965, a group called SDS helped set up a big march in Washington, D.C. Around 20,000 protesters joined in. Then, in November 1965, there was another protest in Washington, this time with about 30,000 people. Things got even crazier in February 1966 when the government changed the rules for college students. Now, if they weren't doing well in school, they could get drafted into the war. Students all over the country started protesting like crazy. The SDS leaders even told them to do things like disobeying military centers and running away to places like Canada or Sweden. The anti-war movement didn't just stay on college campuses. Some soldiers who came back from Vietnam joined in, and musicians started singing songs against the war. By 1967, Americans were pretty split into two groups. The ones who wanted the U.S. to get out of Vietnam were called doves, while the ones who supported the war were called hawks. Some people didn't really pick a side, 
but they didn't like when doves protested because they thought it was disrespectful to the soldiers fighting and dying in Vietnam. Even though there were tons of protests against the war, most Americans in 1967 still thought it was the right thing to do. Actually, in one poll, 70% of people thought the protests were like being disloyal to the country. Some of the hawks even thought the president, Johnson, should be making the military stronger even faster.